Hey guys, how are you today? Hey guys, how are you today? I just realized I went live and I forgot to go get some water. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you hear myself in echo? It's just not good. I forgot to go get myself some water, so hang on one second real quick. I'll be right back. Because we can't watercolor with that. That's gross. Okay, that's better. Let's try to get started with clean water, shall we? Um, let's see. What brush to use today? I think I'm going to use this one. It is, what time is it? It is 10 o'clock Pacific, well, I should say 9.57 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And let's start off our broadcast as we usually always have to by saying, if you're going to uh, post inappropriate comments or you're out there to just be mean and nasty, just don't even bother because I will block you or somebody else will. <laughs> so just don't even bother. <laughs> Good morning. And I hope you guys are seeing this right side up because again, I have no idea. My iPad is despite the fact that I have a landscape, is viewing it upside down. I have no idea how you guys are seeing it. You might be seeing it upside down. I hope not, but we'll have to work with it. Um, it will be saved and posted at a future time to YouTube. So if you want... Okay, good. Yay! Um, if you want to review this uh, broadcast and or, you know, slow it down and pause it and work along with it again, um, then know that I will be posting this to YouTube. I got the most asked questions about this card from last week's broadcast. This is the one where I put on, this is happens to be molding paste, molding paste, modeling paste, depending on the brand, they call it different things, but I think it's about the same thing. Hello, Lisa. And I put it on this card um, through a stencil. See, mine is upside down too. I don't know. Anyway, so this is my flower stencil. And um, I put it on the card through the stencil and I let it dry completely and then I watercolored over it. The raw paper takes the watercolor differently than the paste does. You can also do this with gesso. I got the most questions about this. So before we get started with anything else, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did this one. Um, now, like I said, when I did the original, I used my flower stencil. Now these, I was cutting stencils last night for some orders from my Etsy shop. And yeah, yeah, yeah. These are what I call off cuts where, you know, I've probably it's user error and I've done something wrong and they don't cut exactly right. Like for instance, this one's not supposed to be cut like this. It's supposed to be actually cut and removed out from the background like a mask. And I'm not sure what I did or if it's because I think the computer went to sleep mid-cut, so I don't know. And then I have this one. This is how it's supposed to be. And this one didn't cut exactly either. Some of these little bits are torn. These are what I call off-cuts. Most of the time I keep them um, to use when I'm just playing and experimenting, but I think I'm going to start offering them for sale for discounted price, just FYI, because um, now I have a few of them from last night because I was having, I think I was just tired. So when I did this one, I used this flower stencil, but just for the ease of demonstration, work, I'm going to just use some punchinella. And I've already, I already have two that are completely dry here. Um, this one is gesso. I'm using the uh, silhouette. And then this is the 
golden molding paste. And you can see the difference between them that they're one, you know, the molding paste has gotten much more texture. So I'll show you how I did that. So I'm just I've just got some scraps here. And you just take a little bit of your paste or your gesso and just spread it through the stencil. It doesn't take too much onto the card. And then if you're going to just experiment and play, you can take some gesso also. Ugh. And you could use a brush or you could use a palette knife. Um, you can make your own gesso. There's a lot of recipes on the internet for making homemade gesso. I know Clive Five Art just put um, some recipes on his um, YouTube channel for making gesso. You can also order, you know, order um, art supplies. There's a lot of really great art supply stores on the internet. Um, one of my favorites is not a U.S. based store, actually. It's in the U.K., Jackson's Art. I love them. Their prices are great, even with shipping. So once you get your little piece of paper with your gesso or molding paste on it, you want to let it dry completely. Um, I also like Amazon and um, oh, Dubai. Okay. I, yeah, I also like Amazon and I like, you know, Dick Blick. I don't know about Dubai. I love Jackson's art. Um, a lot of your big box stores here in the U.S. like Walmart carry um, a limited amount of art supplies, but they do have them. Maybe somebody else who's online has a, a clue because about Dubai because I don't actually know. So I've got some watercolor here and no, you didn't miss much. We just got started. <clears throat> My table's full again. How you know? How does this happen so quickly? <laughs> All right, let's see. I got to move stuff out of the way. All right, so I've got a palette. This is. Um, also, too, uh, Koi, if you're in my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, you could post a question to Facebook, to the group, and maybe somebody knows. Um, and um, if they don't know, maybe we can help you find out. If you're not a member of the group, you can request to join. Um, this is my Daniel Smith watercolor palette. Can I get it wet? You can do this with any color. You've got your paste or your gesso on your card and it's completely dry. Yeah, yeah, this one is so clean, right? Because I just recently switched up a bunch of my paints, paints to new palettes. So you can tell I've just started using them. So they're pretty clean. Um, so the paper is going to take the paint differently than the, the paste or the gesso. Um, and that's kind of the idea behind this. So I'm going to start with a color. Let's see. I'm going to go with this one. And I'm going to put some up here. I need some water. This one's called Moon Glow, and it's a dark grayish purple. And I'm going to just put some on the card and then I'm going to just grab some water and move the pigment around. And the paste, although it's absorbent, it's not as absorbent as the paper. So most of your pigment's going to go straight to the paper and the paste is slightly resistant and you get this interesting textured effect similar to what I got on here and you know how dark it is just depends on how much pigment you put on there and like I can just take straight pigment and just darken it up without so much water it's a really interesting way to do a background for something
yeah and so that's the that's this one. Oh, good um, so that's this one these have the same medium on them this is gesso I've done this before I actually did this in a a journal a while back um, you can do this with spray inks too um, you know like your delusion sprays so here we just have some gesso this is just gesso so again I'm gonna put the pigment on there and then I'm gonna put some water kind of spread it out a bit it a bit you can also that was kind of a lot of water <laughs> so let's let's lift some of that water so you can start to see where the paint is going right into the paper and the gesso although it's absorbent is slightly resistant and then you can put more pigment on there And you can just play with it and suddenly where you couldn't really see the punchinella dots before suddenly now you can because you stuck some pigment on there and that's that's exactly that's how I did this so I'd recommend playing with both the gesso and the media uh, molding paste or modeling paste depending on which brand you have and um, your watercolor paints and just make some of these little cards make some notes on the back on the back see what kind of effects you can get and add that to your sort of little custom reference library all right this morning I thought we would actually start on a painting I've done some pre preliminary like rough sketches here I don't know if all of you saw my post on social media about the YouTube video of the little bird that I found if one of you have the link maybe you can post it in the comments um, I will put it in the description below um, when I put, load this video to YouTube, but there was an artist on YouTube whose name I don't remember at the moment who did this little bird painting that I thought was just fabulous. Um, so I have lots of reference books in my studio. I have one of birds. I have one of fish. Um, so I went through and found a little bird, and I just did a rough sketch. These are great for not only the sketches but for colors. And we're going to do a little bird. Oops, mark my page. All right, so I'm actually, ugh, I need my book weight. Hang on. Got one of these things. No, it's not a self defense tool. <laughs> no, somebody asked me that. It does kind of look like it. It's to hold your book open. All right, uh, so we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna show you first how to how I sketched this. I know, right? It looks like something you'd whack somebody with if they try to attack you. <laughs> so I'm gonna just do a little, you know, rough. We're gonna do a rough bird sketch. So I want you to get your paper, just a plain old number two pencil. This is a Faber Castell. Um, this is one of their jumbo, um, like it's a fat pencil, which is great for those of us who have, you know, some arthritis going on, um, and you have trouble holding a skinny pencil for too long. And then you just need an eraser. This is a Staedtler, um, Pen Mars plastic pencil eraser. And I do have my Van new Van Gogh palette, not, not too far away, by the way, you guys. This is the new one, because, you know, I dropped the old one and broke it. <laughs> so... I put everything, I transferred everything over and redid it. It's in this new metal box. All right. Yeah, so this is, and I got this at Joann's. It wasn't really hard to find. It was over by their other drawing stuff in the fine art department, and it came in a pack of two. I love it. All right, so we're going to start with like sort of an ovally shape for the head, and you just want light, sketchy lines. As I tell all the people I work with, no digging any holes to China with your pencil. Just light sketchy lines and this is a practice piece so you don't even have to worry so much about um, yeah Michaels probably has them don't even worry so much about erasing the lines although if you want to after the paint is dry it should erase really pretty well okay so that's our that's our head then we're gonna just do it like a triangle and you're just you're giving yourself some guidelines 
Then we're going to do another like oval here for the body. I'm looking at my picture so I kind of get the angle of the ovaly shape. Something similar to what I see going on in the in the picture in the book. This is let me move this a little bit so you guys can see the picture in the book. Hopefully you can see it now. Yep, there you go. All right, then I'm going to work on here on the wing and the tail. Now, because my paper is kind of narrow, I'm going to probably have to adjust the angle of the tail, but that's all right. Right, and I'm going to just give myself some lines. Like I said, light sketching lines. Just so you give yourself some sort of guideline. Don't forget to put in sort of a reference, little sort of ovally, almondy shape for the eye. And then I kind of drew in the, the places where the, there was black and then white, like in the picture. And then as I did that, I started to connect the head to the neck here. And then we've got another like dark patch here under his beak. And again, we're going to connect the head and the neck. Learning to draw and sketch is part of working with your paints and your watercolors. And it will come in handy working with your journal pages too. You don't have to be, you know, the world's best sketcher or anything, but you'll have a lot more fun with it if you're not always reliant on um, buying stamps and that sort of thing. So now I'm just going to do something that sort of resembles where his feet are going and his little leg. They're kind of wrapped around a branch here. Okay. So then we just have this simple little bird sketch. And you can put these aside. Okay. And I actually did a bird and a fish, so here's my original bird that I did. So we're going to start with light and go our way to dark. Um, when you're working with watercolors, as we've talked about in the past, you have to work with your lightest value and work your way dark. So let's see, I want to start with something that's gr gray but has a little bit of blue in it. And I have this Daniel Smith color called Solidite. That's really pretty. This color. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it down here. And I'm gonna put some of the pigment here and then I'm gonna grab some water. Cause I don't want it too dark and I want it light and the water will thin out the pigment. And I'm going to start coloring my bird in. And I'm going to then put a little pigment and then I'm going to spread it out with the water. Take a little bit of this maybe and start putting it in his wing suggesting shapes. Remember, we're just suggesting. I'm an expressive painter. I'm not a realist painter. And the way I like to watercolor is have something that's really expressive with lots of energy that suggests the realistic shape without actually drawing it. I'm still looking at the picture. I'm looking at where the dark shapes are in the photo and I'm just adding this like watery gray color to my bird in similar spots as in the photo. Thank you for all the hearts. I love that. Then before I get too far, I'm cleaning my brush off and I'm just blending out the pigment a little bit with some water. Okay. 
Now, because I really like what Jean Haynes calls energy washes, as I'm painting, I'm going to take random spots occasionally, and I'm going to put water on them. And you notice right there already, the paint started to bleed. And then I'm going to also do this. And if you get too much, have your rag handy. I love that. Don't be afraid to purposefully mess up your painting. Okay, I'm going to do that one more time. I think I'm wanting to do it like maybe down here. So just some water next to where I already painted. And if the paint is wet there, it's going to bleed and bloom like that. Just give it a shake. Do it right here too. Right here. All right, let's do it again. Okay, I like that a lot. Now you can also, you know, have your hair your heat tool ready. You'll see me a lot in my videos. I use my embossing tool. I never use it, almost never use it for embossing, but I frequently use it for drawing watercolors because at some point I'm gonna get with this where I don't want the next layer of color to bleed into a lot into the color I've already got on there. So I'm gonna to want to dry what's on here before I put fresh wet color to help prevent some of that. So now I'm gonna go in with more of the same color but with less water. And that works right now, Cheryl. I'm going to blot my brush off so I don't have so much water and I'm going to just blend this darker color. I'm working my way from dark to light. I mean, it's from light to dark, holy cow. Let's see, looking at my photo. I'm having a hard time deciding if I want to look at the camera. I'm sorry, the iPad <laughs> or the reference photo. I should watch what I'm painting. It's probably what I should be doing. I can, yeah. Hang on, let me, let's see. Hang on, let me zoom in a little bit. Ugh. There you go, how's that? I have to get on this stool to do that because I'm short. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let the, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let the color I've put on there dry a little bit and let's work on some other parts of the bird. Now my reference chickadee is like black and white and tan, but I think I want to make him, the in the video, one of the things I liked is she made him a little bit pink. I really liked that. So I think I'm going to mix together um, Opera Pink, which is a bright, this is the paint palette I have that I'm using. Opera pink, which is really bright neon pink. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of sepia in it. So we have a rosy brown. And that's the color I'm going to put here where you see the tan in the photo. Oh, you can't see the photo anymore. Where you see the tan in the photo.
you can um, go to like Pinterest and um, just, um, you know, do a search for pictures of chickadees. And I'm going to lay a little bit of the pigment and then I'm going to blend it out. And then I'm going to also, you know, I don't want this harsh line. So I want one color to really just blend into the other color. And you see right there how I laid some of the pink over the gray and you can see the colors just laying right on top of each other. They're, you know, very translucent, the Daniel Smith colors especially. Right? Okay, now I'm going to grab some water and I'm going to do some right up here near where I did it before and I'm going to just put plain water and then I'm going to grab some of our pink. Those of you who haven't been on social media yet today, I posted um, the link to my website that has the schedule where I'm going to go live um, every week if I can. Um, and you can go over there and you can catch that over there. I want to put some pink down here too. Just a dab. Let it run into the water. I like that. Okay. Nice. All right. Now I do think I want to add a little bit of a like creamy beigey brown. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. I just like color too much. My bird is going to be end up being a completely different color than the drawing you watch. Um, now this is just practice. So remember, if you don't do it correctly, there's no harm, no foul. And all the little practice cards you were doing, if you're practicing with them and figuring out what your watercolor paints will and won't do, will lead you up to doing something like this. Start with something simple. Um, if you don't feel up to actually trying to do an animal or a fish or a bird, then just do a flower, do a, some kind of basic round, um, even unrealistic flower shape, maybe just a daisy. Daisies are easy. Um, I'm still trying to decide on color. That's why I'm stalling and chatting. I'm going to actually go with bloodstone. Bloodstone is this color here, which is a reddish brown. And I'm going to grab some of that and some water. And again, change the colors up on this depending on not only what palette you have, but what colors you like. Just because we're doing a reference photo of a chickadee doesn't mean you even want your chickadee to, you know, be that even close to the same color. It doesn't have to be. So now I'm going to start, um, let's see. Yeah, just do a daisy. Daisies are great. I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush. This is a Royal Watercolor brush. It's a round number four. And I'm going to go in, start um, up here. And I'm just doing lines. They're all kind of going the same direction, but they're not all the same length. And then I'm going to grab just some water. And I'm going to smudge them just a bit. Then I'll come back and do it again. And then I'm going to do it again down here. Same color.
this will give you like the suggestion of feathers. We're just suggesting them here. And I'm just looking at the picture and where I can kind of see like suggestive lines of feathers in the photo. That's what I'm doing on my, on my painting. Okay, it's time to come back in with something dark. So this time I'm going to use um, Payne's Great. Well, no, wait, before I do that, I want to do something up here. Okay, so I'm going to start to put the beak in. And I'm going to start to do something with the eye. I'm going to remember that I want there to be a highlight in the bird's eye where the sunlight is hitting the eye, which means that I have to leave the white paper, or you're going to have to go over it again with gel pen or Chinese white, which is what this is right here. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that. What I want to do before we do anything else is dry it. So I'm going to grab my heat tool. Okay, now you could leave it at that and that's a really cute painting, but if you really want it to pop and sing, then you want your bird to have some really dark spots along with the lighter spots. Um, a lot of times with paintings, the problem I see is that the painting is all done in the same tone of color um, on the color wheel. All pastel -y colors, all really bright colors. There's no pop of anything really, really light or really, really dark. Sorry, coffee break. And if you do that, if you have something really, really dark or really, really light, it's going to give it a really nice pop and really make it sing. And we're going to go in with um, my favorite dark color, Payne's Gray. I need some water. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the... Um, bird's head and I'm going to just take it one little section at a time and I'm going to lay my pigment pigment down and then I'm going to put the water on the brush the clean water and I'm going to spread the pigment out and just blend it into the surrounding parts of the bird where I want it to go pull it down and I'm gonna do down here I'm pulling out with just the tip of my brush just some kind of little lines of pigment um, and I may blur some of them with plain water while the paint is wet I may leave some and that'll just help me suggest feathers. 
And you notice how our pencil lines that we have on there underneath, they're helping us kind of define our bird. The other thing I'm going to do is take some of my Payne's Gray and I'm going to continually work on darkening the eye. I'm going to pull it in a little bit from the shape that we put on there before so that you have sort of a brown edge and then a white edge around the eye. There we go. And that's just with the very tip of the paintbrush. I didn't press down too hard. Um, I'm also going to darken up the beak. Again, I'm barely touching the paper. I'm, I, yeah, I'm just using water. Thanks, Cindy. I'm not using anything fancy, just water. Water and paint, watercolor paint, that's it. And right now we're doing using Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a dark um, bluish gray color. And remember, your darks don't always have to be black. Uh, Payne's Gray is one of my favorites. I also really like using a really dark violet. This, I got to tell you guys, this little bird's turning out really cute. <laughs> I do say so myself. He is really cute. Um, all right, so let's keep going. We got some darkness down here at the tip of his wing. I'm Again, I'm barely, barely touching the brush to the paper and I'm putting a little pigment on and then I'm just getting my brush clean with water and then just blending out some of those marks I just made. Maybe not all of them, but some of them for sure. I'm going to turn it just a little bit because it'll be easier for me. And I'm really using pretty strong pigment, Payne's Gray pigment. I'm not um, thinning it out with water too much. I'm dipping my brush right into the half pan of um, activated watered um, paint. Thanks for the hearts, you guys. I'm just dipping my um, brush into the right into the paint pan like that. Yeah. And I'm gonna grab some water, pull some of those pigments down. And just keep doing that until you really are really happy with how your bird looks. Now you notice some of it's bleeding right here. I love that though. I'm not going to mess with that. Love it, love it. I'm using now pretty much just using my <clears throat> photo for um, reference now for, you know, color and light because I've changed up the color of the bird so much. I'm going to leave the bird alone for a second and I'm going to come down to the feet. And for the moment, I'm going to stick with, um, I think, the Payne's Gray. Put a little bit of the pigment on the paper and then just spread it out again with water. And let's also do the branch. Um, I'm going to use for the branch, um, I have uh, raw umber violet and also sepia. 
and Van Dyke Brown. I have Van Dyke Brown too. Let's start with Raw Umber Violet, which is a red brown. And to do branches, you know, effectively, touch your round brush to the paper and then give it a twist as you're painting. Whether you're working with acrylic or watercolor, that'll give you a crooked line, but a crooked line is what you want. Branches aren't even. Um, and if you do something that's crooked, it's going to look more natural. And then again, just take your just plain water and just blend out your edges a little bit. Make them more suggestive. Blurry. And just like with the bird, the branch is going to need, you know, pops of dark and light. Right here, because the feet were wet, you notice that the brown went right into the feet. And I don't necessarily want that, so I'm going to just pick it up with a, um, a rag. I'm going to go in with uh, sepia, which is a dark grayish brown. And we're not going to put this everywhere. We're going to just put it in a few places. It's going to mix with the water, and we're going to help it along with some more water. If it gets into our feet, we're going to get in there with the rag again. Now you can also do with the branch what we did with the bird, and you can just put some water down here. Just knock it with paper on the table and you're going to get these wonderful drips and splatters and Jean Haynes calls those energy washes and things. Yes, so the watercolor paint blends completely differently on gesso or um, watercolor ground than it does on raw paper. Um, I feel like I have more control on raw paper than I do on gesso or ground. So that's one of the reasons why I encouraged you guys last week to use some of these cards. Do them, some of them on raw paper, do some of them on what, gesso, and so if you have watercolor ground or absorbent ground, do some of them on that, because each one of them is a little bit different. All right, so now we're going to go in with... A color I don't use a lot in any painting, but in this case, I think it's really called for black. Um, again, we're going to stick with a little brush, and I'm going to use my ivory black. And I'm going to come in here, and this is going to give you really, really a big pop. And I'm going to be sort of careful with the bird's outline. In the darkest parts of your bird. I think I just stuck my hand in something. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> wow, well, it's gonna have to be a happy accident. <laughs> So the darkest, part, darkest parts of my bird are going to get some black. Continually looking at the reference photo, laying down a little pigment and then going in with a little bit of water. You don't necessarily have to blur all, all the paint out, but you want to push it around. Better to just put a little paint and push it around and then add more paint to make it darker than to put too much and have it end up way too dark because with watercolor, you can't take it back. I'm going to add a little bit of black to the eye because the little bit of black to the eye is going to really make it pop and sing. And I'm going to add a little bit up here. Not too much because I'm getting this feeling I don't want too much right here. And 
Now I'm lifting some of that color off. I do like the wash of the like light gray color that black paint gave that. And then we're going to come in over here and do the same thing to the wing. I need some more water. You can do this with any brand of paints. Um, I'm using all Daniel Smith this morning. But those of you who have been watching for me for a while know I have lots of different kinds of paint because I like paint. But Daniel Smith, I have to say Daniel Smith, I think is my favorite watercolor paint. I love the color range. I love the translucency. I love the granulation of the paint. They've got some really fabulous colors that nobody else has. I'm not going to neglect the tail because we want some of this in the tail. There you go. He is a one cute bird. Now, of course you can. There is nothing wrong with taking your watercolor painting when it's done. Really clean your brush off and go into your white if you have some white. And if you don't, you can use white acrylic paint or a white gel pen. And go in and put a pop of white on the beak, a pop in the eye. and anywhere else you think you might need a little pop of white. Three colors I always buy when I buy watercolor paint are white, black, and Payne's Gray. That is one cute birdie. Now before we call him done, let's do something with his feet. His feet need a little attention. So I'm going to go in with... What color? Um, yes! I sometimes do my sketch in water-soluble pencils. And then when as I'm painting, the paint um, dissolves the pencil and you, can't, you don't see any pencil marks. I'm going to go in with black. Yeah, definitely you can. If you have water-soluble pencils, this is taped. It will be up. I'm. Re it's recording to my phone. All my Periscope recordings record to my phone, and I will put it up on YouTube. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies. I gotta sneeze. After getting sick this weekend, when I shouldn't have really gotten sick. Um. I stopped taking some of my allergy medicine. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go in with some of my white. We're still, I'm just, I'm doing the feet here. And again, I just want a suggestion of the feet. But I do want something that looks like feet. Well, it's pretty good. Thank you. He's pretty good. I'm going to leave him alone. <laughs> So that's just a quick little bird and I will post, when I post this video to YouTube, I will make sure to link the original video where, video where I saw her do a little chickadee and I just thought that was just brilliant. Um, and um, she did it very similarly to this and I want you guys to see that and watch her. Go show her channel some love. And, uh, I, you know, just practice. I'm going to also do a fish here. I um... Oh, yes, I will. I found this fish in my fish book, so I think I want to do a fish. Um, not today, but 
um, just do. And I, I get these little reference books at the used bookstore. You know, I pay a couple bucks for them. They're good for reference for your art, art room. And, you know, this is a bird watcher's book, so there's a million different birds in it. If you guys have any questions... And I'd encourage you to, you know, give this a try. This is um, Strathmore um, Brown Pad, Brown Series. What is it called? Not brown, red. 400 Series Strathmore 140-pound watercolor paper. Not because that's anything in particular, because it's what I had. I probably bought it because it was probably on sale, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Use what you have. If you don't have watercolor paper, then you're going to want to prep your paper with some gesso or ground before you get started. Um, otherwise, the paper won't hold up under all the water that you're going to have on here. Does anybody have any questions this morning? Do a few birds, and you know. The first one you may may not turn out to be anything that you like, but it's just practice. He's pretty cute. I like him. I can see me scanning him and using him on some other stuff. Thank you for the hearts very much. Good. I just want you guys to practice right now. And then, you know, don't forget to try these. He, yeah, he's really cute. Um, try, you know, working with your watercolors over some molding paste and some gesso, um, just straight, but also you could, um, you know, put it through a stencil and don't forget about all of these cards that we did last week. You know, try putting, um, one thing you could do on him is if when you do these puddles while they're wet, you could put a little bit of salt, table salt in them. And when they dry, it's going to leave you a texture. You could try um, putting some white crayon on your bird in the places that you want to st have stay white before you start coloring, and you'll get something that looks like that. That's fine, and that's why it's going to be up on YouTube so that you guys can do that. Don't forget to practice just your basic shapes. This will give you um, some really good practice with, um, you know, color blending and um, using the paper on the dry paper to create a defined edge and then also on wet and where the paint will go, how you can get it to move. And don't forget to just, you know, do some of these techniques with just a basic doodle. Um, just, you know, daisy flowers are a great one. Just some kind of simple, you know, childlike flower. You're just doing a practice. Um, don't forget about doing maybe like a rainbow. What was this one? This one was after our broadcast last, yeah, practice a lot. After our broadcast last week, Cindy Utter, if she's still here, um, was wondering what would have, what would like to, um, what would it look like to do the wet watercolor with foil pressed in it and let it dry. So this is foil, tin, just regular aluminum foil. And this one is cheesecloth. And you get these really interesting little similar but slightly different textures. They're really cool. Don't forget this one was the water soluble or stabilo pencil. Now you definitely could do this with um, watercolor pencil shaving things dripped into the uh, wet paint. Yeah, it was a cool idea. It was a very cool idea. And when we do these watercolor Wednesdays, I saw Jerry's post. I think each one of the watercolor Wednesdays, as we do our paintings, we're going to practice a little drawing too, because drawing and paintings go painting go hand in hand. This is with alcohol. There's another color blending. This one is just scratched into the wet paint, and then you let it dry. This is with salt. You can see the little granular um, texture in the paint. This is plastic wrap, more crayon. This is just a little bit of paint and lots and lots of water. So just practice, practice, practice. And you know, maybe if you guys are really nervous about the drawing part, just do little pencil drawing of some little flowers. And just practice on a little flower. Yeah, and just turn your little reference cards into a little book. At some point, I'm going to use my bind-it-all um, to, 
excuse me, put all these into a little book. Um, they Most of them have notes on the back. And I'm going to make my own little reference book. Any more questions? Next week, if you guys want, we will do another one. Um, and um, I think we'll do a fish. And we'll do the sketch first, and then we will do the painting. And you guys can let me know on YouTube when this airs in the comments, or you can let me know if you're in my Facebook group um, what else you would like to see um, on Watercolor Wednesday. But in between, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> you're welcome. If there was a shortcut to getting better with watercolor and art, believe me, I would tell you because I am the lazy crafter. <laughs> so, yeah, the fish I think is going to be a lot of fun. You're welcome. Everybody have a great day. I have bookkeeping to do. Blah. <laughs> I might try to. I might try to paint my other little bird that I just sketched too, because this was fun. And these would be great scanned if you did this and then scan it and put it on the front of a greeting card. You could do one of these maybe even in a with more wintry colors and um, or maybe holding a branch of uh, holly berries and put them on your Christmas card if you still send out Christmas cards, which I do. All right, I will talk to you all later. Have a great day. Don't forget that you can find me all over social media, also at GinaBAarons.com and my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression and... Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.